What up, GDQ? I'm the Retro Runner. I speed run retro video games. You're getting silly or what? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to a Halloween-infused fever dream of an NES game called Monster Party. This game is very near and dear to my heart. Lots of nostalgia, teeming with charm and just like bizarre dialogue and bosses. You play as Mark, a little boy who gets visited by a gargoyle named Bert. Yeah, that's his actual name. Uh, who beckons Mark to help him save his home world from an invasion of monsters. And Mark very reasonably is like, L listen, I'm, I'm just a little boy and I have no weapons. And Bert's like, ah, I see you got a baseball bat there. That's like probably fine. I'm not even making this up. I'm not exaggerating. This is the actual game. Uh, as Mark, you can jump, you can hit things with your bat, you can hold uh, the B button, which will extend Mark's bat and continuously do damage. If you press down during a jump, he will jut down, and Mark can even do the worm, which is tech we'll showcase in this run. Uh, really quick, there are three items that you can get. You can get health, you can get a pill, which uh, for a time, turns you into Bert, who can fly and shoot projectiles, and you can get a question mark, which can either be points, health, a pill, or nothing at all. Uh, but without further ado, I'm just going to let this game be the bizarre uh, game that it is. Uh, countdown. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> all right, so there's not like that much, honestly, to the gameplay of this game. It's all about going in these doors and uh, fighting these bosses. Uh, there are eight rounds, and each round has requisite bosses that you have to defeat before the game lets you proceed to the next round. Uh, real quick, look, look at, give it up for this guy who's stuck in the ground trying to get out. Look, look at those legs. Come on, come on. <laughs> Um, coming up, we have uh, one of the best boss, my favorite bosses in video game history. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's actually on my shirt. Um, he has a lot to say. Sorry, I'm dead. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> okay, you pass this. Totally not a cactor. The stage completely changes. Uh, there's something just in this round we call ledge boosting. Basically, we just route the uh, the route around Mark uh, walking off of as many ledges as possible. Um, it actually boosts him one pixel to the right. Uh, please don't pick on me. And uh, then he attacks us. That was actually a decent fight. It was pretty good. <laughs> Try to get to the next round here. Do you have time for a really quick donation? Um, sure, sure. Here's $50 from Anonymous who says, Sorry, I'm dead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shred. Yo, give it up for reverse mermaids. Come on, look at these enemies. So good. Um, originally, the, there's a prototype of this game that never came out. Uh, because originally all of these bosses were like, uh, you know, like Universal Studio Monsters and Hollywood Movie IPs. That one was supposed to be Medusa. You can use uh, a couple of these like, uh, I guess we'll call them sewage pipes, to warp to different parts of the stage. And we're also using something called bat boosting. We just turn around at the last minute after we bat an enemy. Uh, here we have the Tempura Boss Rush. Uh, we got Tempura Shrimp. Uh, here we have, I think that this is a squid ring. I would call it a Galamod. Some people think it's an onion ring. You can say whether you're team onion ring or team squid ring in chat. <laughs> a little bit of the worm there. You'll see that again later, though. You got to really showcase how awesome that, that animation is. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so this boss is like a reference to like 
the ring, you know, like a Ringu sort of deal. You don't want to take too damage, uh, too much damage there, because uh, then you get risk of death. But uh, we're pretty good on health right now. More bat boosting. Uh, I'll just get, I'll get past you there. Some health. I should probably not kill that. Okay, that's round two. <laughs> okay, so like um, all of the enemies in this game have static item drops, but this is kind of balanced by uh, enemy spawns being affected by items that you get. Uh, certain enemies won't spawn if you obtain certain items or kill certain enemies. So what we're going to do is there's a, this is a, supposed to be a vampire. Uh, we're going to kill this vampire and that will cause this vampire to spawn and drop some health. Health is good for marathons. Move it. <laughs> and we can even get that health again. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I don't even know how to describe this or why this happens. Normally there are these like stalactites that fall on you, um, but if you like mimic my movement there, uh, they can uh, fall as soon as you scroll the screen. We have a mummy here. Sometimes he wants hugs. Sometimes he wants hugs. We don't want hugs though. We, we don't want to die. Yeah, stay over there. Good. Oh, wow. Okay, this is great. Uh, like I said, um, Bert, uh, when you get the pill, you, you're only Bert for a limited time. So in a lot of areas, you want to extend your Bert form, and the only way to do that is get by getting pills. Um, and question marks can be hearts or pills or like nothing or points. So there's a bit of a gamble there uh, with getting a question mark and like hoping that you uh, get a pill. It actually saves like six seconds from uh, transforming back into Mark and then back into Bert as well. Uh, so this is pretty good RNG so far. That was a good fight. More health. And that's round three. All right, heading into round four. This is like an Egyptian-themed round for some reason. Uh, we're going to kill this snake, not get the health not kill the snake, and then normally there'd be a scorpion that would spawn right here, and we just made him despawn. And you can see that transformation phase, like, waste time. We, we want to avoid that when we can. Uh, cool, we got that hit. I'll take that health. Uh, this is actually probably one of the more quote-unquote technical kills in the game. I... I'm a slowpoke. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> that's the idea. You want to follow him and uh, jut down with your bat. Might I bother you for a quick donation? Absolutely. Here's five hundred dollars. Oh, 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 let's go. From Julie Cat. Who Julie says, Cat! Cats, cats, mass hysteria! <laughs> Good luck, TRR. Thanks and, so much, Julie. <laughs> and I think I speak for all the first nights of the Retro Shredders when I say, sorry, I'm dead. Yes, Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you for the generous donation. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty tough hit to get. Um, just a little bit more insurance with health. We're gonna kill the snake, not get the health, or whatever item they drop. I've never played this game before. Um, which despawns the scorpion that's normally there. Kill the snake. We're looking for a pill here. Transforming into Bert. Some health. Another amazing boss 
coming up. He's gonna he's gonna try to outshred us. He can't though. He can't. You can't outshred me. Don't even try. Try as you might. You'll never try. Okay, great. Some more health for insurance. And we'll actually pick up a pill here to stay in Bert form. And that's round four. <laughs> Making our way. Okay, I'll try this. I probably won't get it because it's frame perfect. But if you enter a door on the same frame that you would transform. Yeah, look at these sharks with the oversized fins. Like, <laughs> I love this game. Uh, we're going to try to uh, circumvent the, uh, the transformation phase here. I didn't get it. Oh, I did get it. I did it. It's frame perfect. <laughs> Uh, these zombies beckon you to uh, watch them dance. You can't uh, hit them at all or they'll start all over. So nothing left to do but the worm. Let's get some donations going. <laughs> oh, I have a perfect donation for while they're dancing. Here is $50 from Not Bobby Boris Pickett, who says, I was watching GDQ late one night when my eyes beheld a silly sight. For Monster fr Party from its cartridge began to rise, and suddenly, to my surprise, he did the smash. He did the monster smash, the monster <laughs> smash. He beat up plants with a bat, he did the smash. He walked off ledges to dash, he did the smash. He did the monster smash. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Should have gotten that person on my couch. They're more clever than I am. Um, uh, we can continue some more donations if you got them. Oh, you know I do. We have thirty dollars from Untoasted Toast, who says, "Sorry, I'm bread." <laughs> I love it. Also, $10 from Lemon Carrots, who says, Oh no, I love Monster Party. <laughs> Do you have time for any more? Yeah, yeah, a couple more. Fine. Sure. Here's $10 from Shuma G, who says, I went to a dog show the other day. A Yorkie took best in show. A Jack Russell took second, and a Scotty took third. I'm starting to think the judges had some sort of all terrier motive. Uh. <laughs> I was very involved. <laughs> all right, just real quick. Pants. That's all I got to say. Pants. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, this is a sort of a maze level, which could be kind of confusing. Um, but actually, the, the size of this level is not that large. Um, I was able to figure it out as a kid, so, uh, you know, if you feel like wasting some time, you, you probably could power through it, or you could just follow the exact route that I'm taking here. There's only one boss in this round, and here it is. Which one? It's always the bottom right one. Wow, we're getting some sick RNG right now. Uh, that's probably one of the best patterns you get from the boss. Okay, so the next round is just like purely a vertical climb. So uh, doing that as Mark is not only time consuming, but pretty difficult. We're going to get a pill to stay in burp form. One more time with me. Pants! <laughs> and... That's round six. <laughs> okay, so Bert's like flight speed is purely dependent on how fast you can match the A button. One of two bosses coming up. This is a quick kill we recently came up with. Yes, very good, very good. Get that pill to stay in Bert form. Mash a mash. It's a shame it's a really good track, but it starts over like after every screen transition. It's really dumb. <laughs> 
you have time for a couple quick donations? Yes, yes, I actually do. Because people are getting so creative. I have $5 from the Michelin man who says, sorry, I'm Tread. Um, <laughs> we have $50 from a level 500 boss who says, sorry, I'm Squid. <laughs> and $5 from Fred who says, sorry, I'm Fred. Uh, how did I know that was coming? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for introducing yourselves and apologizing. All right, only two bosses in the stage. Pretty short one. Only one more stage to go. That was round seven. All right, this is one of the more brutal uh, RNG-dependent bosses in the game. Okay, not bad, not bad. He can actually just, like, fly around and completely waste your time, and you'll turn back into Mark and be all angry that you had to reset the game and question your decisions about being an adult playing a 30-plus-year-old game that no one really knows about. <laughs> Pretty cool boss kill. You just run right up to him. You, you press down. That'll work like every time, pretty much. Um, so there are these firecrackers that fly at you. Just fly like towards the top of the screen. And when they get close, fly to the like absolute top of the screen. And for some reason, they explode. Uh, it makes this really easy. Another really cool boss coming up. Look at him, he's skating around on his severed head. So cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, you can clap, you can clap. Don't be shy, you can clap. So we have the key. There's only one boss left. Uh, you can only damage this boss when he opens his like nose flap. Um, and that can take uh, about seven seconds, or it can, it can take well over a half a minute. So it's a complete RNG slot machine. We're just gonna have fun and see what we get here. The nose knows. Come on, let's get a good one. Time. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity. Oh, wow, that's a really good time. That's a really good time, especially for a marathon. Uh, if you'll permit me, just uh, uh, humor me. Let me narrate this ending because it's just as humorous and bizarre as the rest of the game. Mark destroyed the monsters. Bert gave him a gift. Mark went home. He excitedly opened the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> A beautiful princess came out, or <laughs> this is like one of my favorite sprites on the NES. Look at this face melting. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Huge fan of the super awkward dialogue. Mark was scared and screamed, ah. <laughs> And it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Mark was awakened by his mom. And then Mark opened the door. Bert was there. He whispered to Mark, let's go again. Let's not. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to showcase uh, one of my favorite games on the NES. Uh, real quick, let me just give some shout outs. Uh, first and foremost, uh, to my awesome wife who supports every little thing that I do, um, but also to uh, the, the Monster Party community, not uh, an enormous community as you might imagine, uh, but some key folks in there, Joey Mittens, uh, Burst Error, Drixis, um, and my, my own community, uh, whom without I would not be able to be here. Uh, so let's keep it silly for the rest of the night, and I'll see you on the flip. Keep on shredding games!